As you can see here, I've been busily culling crap from my horrible mess that is a computer room. Getting ready to send all this stuff off to electronics recycling. I don't even know how this monitor can work. I picked this thing up off the curb. Dirty, grubby, the tube is shot. Focus is gone. Somebody even managed to scrape some of the anti-glare coating off of it. And it's hung on for a test bed monitor, but I don't need that anymore. I've got a much better one now. And this monitor always looked kind of pukey green, no matter what you did. And of course, I never got a stand with it, so... And used printers as a rule, I got a lifetime supply of these things, I don't need any more. So, all this stuff is going bye-bye, and then I'm making my last video of the night, because I've really been cranking them out today, just kind of going through a to-do list of uh, videos that I need to make here. So, let me get these things outside so my mother can take them to the electronics recycler tomorrow. And then I'll make the make the video I was planning to make here. Now here is the main attraction of the show. This is an old Compact Desk Pro 466i. And there's not too much that's special about this computer. This was uh, Bizarre Furhead's computer once upon a time. Many, many years ago, back when he was in grade school. And prior to that, it did a little time in a used business machine shop. But it actually has some famous underpinnings. Check that out. Outstanding lead actor in a drama series. It's pretty wild. Ordinarily that'd really be something if I didn't just happen to peel it off the uh, fifth season set of my uh, Rockford Files DVDs. Now the monitor that goes with it is uh, period correct, but the two are not matched. I actually got the monitor out of a grain elevator after they had a fire. And so the monitor has some smoke damage to it, but it still works well. What makes this computer so special is actually its optical drive right down here. This is an early uh, one-speed Philips LMS drive. I believe it was assembled in Japan. And while the build quality is kind of cheap, the optics in this thing must be simply outstanding because this thing can do something that a lot of old CD players and CD-ROM drives, as well as anything else that could play an audio CD, cannot usually do this thing can play CD-RW discs. It's really rather amazing, especially when you consider, and I'll show you later, just a glimpse of how cheap this drive really is. Now this drive came as a kit with a MediaVision sound card. MediaVision is, of course, long since out of business. I don't know exactly what happened to them, but I think it was just a simple failure of the company, just another bankruptcy in the technology sector, which is really not too surprising. Anyway, the drive and the uh, sound card were a bundle. The drive actually plugs into a proprietary interface unlike any I have ever seen before on the uh, sound card itself. These two were pulled from a defunct HP 486 desktop. Really a desktop I would have liked to have saved because it was uh, an EISA 486 and it was an interesting form factor but the power supply had had a major failure and had done a lot of damage to the internals of the system so it wasn't to be. I salvaged everything that I could, and I scrapped the rest. Well, let's go ahead and power this thing up. Go ahead and turn on the monitor here. You can see it turns right on. Let it warm up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and boot this thing up. This thing is actually running Windows 98 on an 83 megahertz Pentium Overdrive processor, which is a rather late development to the 486 from Intel. It actually doesn't fit in a standard 486 slot. Uh, not a slot, a socket it uses an extra row of pins around the outer perimeter of the processor. This thing's been upgraded a little bit. It has an 800 or so megabyte uh, IBM hard drive in it, an IDE hard drive. And I also upgraded the memory a little bit because the uh, stock four megabytes of memory on the system board just wasn't exactly cutting it in a Windows 98 world. So I think I put a total of uh, either 28 or 32 megabytes in here. It's some odd number because I was just fishing sims out of my junk box and using whatever presented itself at the time. Let's go ahead and see what it counts up to here. Because I really don't remember for sure. Okay, about 28 megabytes of memory, which is kind of an oddball value, but like I say, I was just using the 72-pin uh, fast page mode sims that I could find in my junk box. Here it goes, booting up. Early compact machines like this always beep twice after they start up, so if you ever hear that, doesn't mean the machine is broken. 
I do a little, little picture adjustment there, not too bad. Last time I used this monitor was when I put that Dell computer in the dishwasher. As you can see, even though it's older, it's still working really well. It has really good color and brightness. Let me go prepare a CDRW real quick. Okay, now before I go ahead and get started with the demonstration here, the sound hardware that's in this thing, not only is the uh, compact business audio there, but there you can see the Media Vision sound cards, Pro, Audium, uh, Pro Audio Spectrum 16. I don't know if it's the basic or if it's the Plus Studio Audio version. Might very well be the fancy one because this card has a, a loudness booster, a hardware tone controls, and a stereo image enhancer. Now Windows 98 does have a built-in driver for the card, but it doesn't have a built-in driver for the CD-ROM drive, so I'm relying on the uh, MediaVision DOS driver, and that throws the uh, CD drive into MS-DOS compatibility mode, where every time Windows wants to uh, Windows wants to access the CD-ROM drive, it's got to transition to real mode, issue the command, and then transition back to protected mode again. And this this uh, this extracts a huge performance penalty, so anytime you have to go into MS-DOS mode, it's not a very good thing. But here's the CDRW that I prepared. You can see it right here, just so there's no, uh, no allegation of trickery or anything like that going on. That's definitely a CDRW. These are older Hewlett-Packard discs, but I love these things because they are extremely reliable. Anyway, go ahead and issue, a, go ahead and issue an eject command here from the Windows CD player. And this thing has a tricolor LED on it. It's red when it encounters a disc that it can't read. It's yellow when it's working on reading a disc. And it's green or flashing green when it's actually reading a disc and playing it back appropriately. Interestingly enough, this drive will also achieve focus lock on almost any DVD. But of course, the MS-DOS device driver and the Microsoft CD extensions can't make any sense of that. So, although there's something in the drive and it recognizes it, it can't actually be anything done with it. So go ahead and pop the tray open there. You can see the red light come on briefly. You can see what a chintzy affair this tray is. You can also see, turn on the handy cam light in there, you can see this drive is rather cheaply made inside. But it has it where it counts, I guess. Go ahead and put this on the tray here and press the button on the drive. You can't actually push the tray on this as you can with like 99.5% of all other CD-ROM drives out there. So you actually have to use the button or issue a command in software and of course that little thing doesn't shut properly. There you can see the yellow light on. And in just a moment that light should go green and I should be able to play this CD for you. Okay there it is. You can see it has recognized it and this is just a record album I've been working on digitizing for my mother, but it's going to need a lot of help because it's been played on a lot of suspicious equipment, has a lot of distortion, and what you're about to hear is about the best I've been able to do as far as resurrecting it goes. So let's go ahead and try this here. Can't find the other speaker, unfortunately. This next song is a real fun one. In fact, my mother and I, if I ever get any of my old VHS stuff posted, my mother and I actually did a music video <laughs> where she lip-synced to the uh, version of this song, and I just ran the camera. It was really very funny. She was using an old laptop, uh, an old three-pin plug on a laptop cord as her microphone. It was really hilarious to watch. Maybe one of these days I'll post it because it was, it was just funny. Look at here, up in Harlem every Saturday night when 
high ground, get together. Lord, it's just you tight. They all congregate for an all night strut. And what they do is cut, cut, cut. Get no old hand around from cross town. Get full of corny front, breaking them down. Just have a break of day. Why you can hear all I can I say? Bring me a big bud and a bottle of beer. Send me gay, cause I don't care. Anyway, there you have it. I'll go ahead and pop the disc out here because I'm running out of tape on this uh, camera. There it is, a long last. It just took a while to come out. There you have it. An old compact disc drive that actually can read CDRW media. Pretty wild, huh?